Go ahead. Uh, WB2NHJ, nice to meet you. This is Whiskey 2, Alpha Echo Whiskey, W2AEW. W2AEW, WB2MHJ, did I get that right? Oh, you got it correct. Uh, name here is Alan, Alpha Lima, Alpha November, running QRP, uh, just about 5 watts, uh, just 5 watts from New Jersey. Just uh, wondering for a quick signal report, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're running about a, a five by six or seven. Today, we're going to take a quick look at this Fox X-Ray 4 Charlie, the FX4C SDR HF QRP transceiver. This uh, very small QRP HF transceiver is actually quite impressive. I just spent uh, a week with it uh, out on vacation, and uh, I was telling you that uh, Outside of one or two little things, I've been very impressed with this radio. All right, let's start by taking a look at the radio physically. It's uh, basically a palm-sized uh, HF transceiver. Uh, operates from 75 meters up to 6 meters in full transceive mode, but then has wideband receive from uh, broadcast AM up through the 2 meter band. So uh, on this side of the rig, we've got the antenna connector. Uh, the connector for some external headphones, an external speaker, although the internal speaker works quite well, and then the connector for the hand mic on-off switch over here. And on this side of the radio, you've got a, a connection for an external uh, optical encoder, if you want to use a larger tuning knob. Uh, it's got a connection for the CW key or a set of paddles, and this is actually a USB connector. It comes supplied with a cable that plugs into this TRS style uh, jack with a USB plug on the other end. And it uses the XT60 style uh, power cord, similar to what you'd find sometimes on RC vehicles. A very sturdy connector, and you just make up your own power cord. Very solid build quality. Um, it basically is designed to operate from, uh, I think, 9 volts to 18 volts. Uh, we'll do up to 10 watts of power. I was getting a little over 5 watts out, actually a little bit higher than that, when running on a 12-volt uh, battery. It features a 2-inch diagonal uh, color LCD display we'll take a closer look at later. And functions on the front panel are, are very straightforward. Upper and lower sideband, CW, uh, memory and VFO mode with 99 memories, and AM and FM wideband receive uh, right down here. Uh, you have two VFOs, A and B, allows you to operate split. It's got an RIT control as well. The IF attenuator control allows you to control essentially the AGC and an input attenuator. This allows you to control power. The menu, goes, the menu brings you to a set of menus for those infrequently changed things. The filter button allows you to switch between the various bandwidth filters that are available in uh, the various receive modes. And then the function, the F button here, is basically the, the button you hit to change bands. There's a tune control and a volume control, and each of those have a push button functionality to them as well. We'll take a closer look at that as well. So let's take a closer look at the controls and the elements of the display. The T equal R in the upper left corner tells us that our transmit and receive frequencies are the same. We're not operating split between the A and B VFOs. The next indicator down says CWL, meaning I'm in the CW mode listening to the lower side. If I touch the single sideband button, it'll cycle between the single sideband modes. LSB, LSB digital, upper sideband, upper sideband digital. And then by touching the CW, we switch it back to CW, again listening on the lower side. Touching and holding the SSB button will switch the mode to listen to the upper sideband. can be helpful if you've got a crowded bound conditions on one side or the other. So it does give you the option of, listen, of having the BFO on the lower or upper side of the signal that you're working. The next indicator says VFO-B. So I'm using the second VFO. That's what uh, we're tuned to here on the 40 meter band. If I touch the AB button, we'll see that it's switched to VFO-A. And the VFO-A display is here and B is now shown down in the sub-display. The next indicator says CW, and if you look at this, it's got the letter M. That means I'm in manual CW mode, meaning that I'll just use a straight Morse code key. If I push the CW button again, you see it now says A. A means I'm in uh, iambic mode A for using a set of paddles. And then you see that it's got uh, a, a dit da after that. 
that indicates that you know essentially one phase of the paddles. If I touch and hold the CW key down, you'll see that it changes to a dot dit that reverses the function of the paddles when you're using paddles. Uh, when you're in manual CW mode, that switch will change the which uh, pins, if you will, on the TRS connector you short together for the straight key, whether it's the tip and the sleeve or the ring and the sleeve. And just below that it says volume, just indicates what our volume level is. And uh, if we push and hold the volume button down, we actually can get into the squelch control and we can actually turn the squelch up or down. Also, while in CW mode, if you do a single push on the volume control, you can adjust the keying speed as well as the side tone uh, frequency, in this case 700 Hz, and the side tone volume. If we switch to single sideband, then the single push on the volume control brings you to the mic gain and the volume. You'll note in single sideband mode that there is a noise reduction and noise blanker. And the way you enable those are long pushes on the single sideband key or the memory uh, and VFO key. So if I push and hold the single sideband key, you'll notice that the noise reduction turned on. Push and hold it again to turn it off. And then push and hold the VFO memory key to turn the noise blanker on. Push and hold again to turn it off. Now of course along the bottom of the display we've got our spectrum and waterfall displays. And this gives you, oh, not quite 20 kilohertz, about 16 to 18 kilohertz of frequency uh, visibility to see activity across uh, that portion of the band. And you've got a shaded area here that indicates you know, where you're listening. In this case, we're in lower sideband, so we're listening you know, essentially from our tune frequency down. If I push the single sideband button again, switch from the digital to upper sideband, you see our shaded area has now moved over here. If I hit the CW key, now we see that the shaded area is now in the center, indicated we're listening to and uh, hearing signals just within that bandwidth. Now back to the top of the display, uh, the ATT is the attenuator. Uh, if we touch and hold the IF ATT key, you can see that that lights up, indicating that we've enabled the front end attenuator, push and hold it again, and that turns off. Single pushes on the IF ATT button change the AGC characteristics. Right now, as we can see in the middle here, the AGC is on medium speed. Touch it, it goes to fast. Touch it again goes to M for manual, but right now that doesn't do anything according to the, ma the maker, but that may be a manual uh, RF gain control in the future. Touch it again, it goes to slow, and cycles back to medium. The power supply voltage is shown in the upper right corner. In this case it says 13.3 volts. Now across, across the center of the display we have the active VFO uh, frequency as well as the sub VFO or the VFO A and B if you will. Uh, right now B is active so this is going to be the B frequency. The VFO A frequency is here. Again switching the A and B toggles between those two. Now below that is our S meter and power output meter during transmit. When tuning the radio, uh, you essentially adjust which digit you're going to adjust with the tune knob uh, simply by pushing the tune knob. You see there's a little carrot above this digit right here. And if I touch that, we see that now move to the digit you know, over here. If I turn the knob, that digit changes. I can push it, now change it you know, by tens of kilohertz push it again to hundreds of kilohertz and back down to 10 hertz, 100 hertz, and 1 kilohertz. You can also push and turn if you want to select it more quickly. In the upper right corner we actually see the receive filter characteristics. In this case we're on single sideband mode or link lower sideband specifically. I've got the 3 kilohertz filter tuned in and we can see graphically what that looks like. By touching on the filter button we can cycle between the available filters in this mode. You can see I got a 1.5 kilohertz filter, 1.8, 2.1, 2.4, 2.7, and back to 3 kilohertz. If we switch to CW mode uh, and, and go through our filter selections, we can see we've got an 800 hertz filter, and then we cycle to the lowest one, which is 50 hertz. I found this to be a little bit ringy, but under very crowded conditions, it might work well. Then there's also a 100 hertz, 200, 300, 
500, and then back to 8. I found that the upper three work quite well. The 300 hertz, 500 hertz, which is what I use most of the time on CW, and 800 hertz all work very well. Below that it shows you the RIT setting right now. It's plus zero, so we're not uh, receiving at a slightly offset frequency. But by touching the RIT button here, we can now adjust the RIT up or down. And that the RIT will adjust based on where we have the carrot. And you simply touch the RIT button again to get out of that mode. The previously mentioned side tone volume, uh, side tone frequency, and key speed, which you can adjust by cycling. All those values are shown uh, right on the display for you. Now, let's see, listen to this station here through a couple of the CW filters. There's the 800 hertz filter. The 50 hertz, like I said, works well, a little bit ringy. 100 hertz. 200, 300 hertz filter, 500, and 800 hertz. So let's take a listen to the single sideband filter selections. So this is the 3 kilohertz filter, 1.5 kilohertz filter, 1.8, Two point four, two point seven, and the three kilohertz filter. Not too bad through that tiny little speaker. Now to change bands on the radio, we simply hit the F button, and we can see the band changes. And you can actually just uh, cycle through the various bands using the tune control, and then just let it sit, and it'll actually switch to those bands. It'll just revert to that after about uh, seven or eight seconds. Or you can actually touch the F button again and it will go back. Touching and holding the F button will actually put on a keyboard lock so that uh, changing the knobs or anything won't have any effect on what you're doing. Touching and holding it again will unlock uh, the various controls. Now if you touch and hold the AM FM button, you'll switch between FM and AM receive modes. But if I push and hold the AM FM button down, then it switches to receive only mode. You see it says RX up here. And now when you go to the band selections, you see you have more bands selected. Down from medium wave, which is broadcast AM, all the way up through many of the uh, shortwave receiving bands, including um, all the way up to 2 meter FM. Now, of course you touch and hold the AM FM button again to switch back into transceive mode where the bands that show up now on the band select are only the uh, HF amateur radio bands. Well, actually HF plus 6 meters. Well, there you have it. It's a little bit of a run through of how to operate this FX4C. A little bit of demonstration of all the capabilities that are on the display and all the functionality. Now, I'll also mention that uh, on the USB port, there's actually a built-in USB sound card. So the rig is really digital mode ready. And we saw that when cycling through single sideband. You've got SSB digital low, SSB digital high, uh, upper, uh, as well as just normal upper and lower sideband. With that sound card, you can uh, directly use that with for things like FT8 and other digital sound card modes uh, directly as the sound card is built in. So it looks like a USB device when you hook it up to your PC. That same USB port is what's going to be used to uh, reprogram uh, and uh, reload firmware. Currently there's version 1.0 firmware on this unit. It is relatively new. And I've been in email contact with the developer and there's a number of things he's got planned for future versions of firmware. And the firmware update process is actually pretty easy. Uh, maybe later on, uh, as new firmware comes out, we'll do another video to show how to do the firmware update. Now overall, I've been extremely impressed with this radio. As I mentioned at the beginning, I spent about a week of this radio on vacation, set up a temporary NFED antenna, and worked lots of stations, mainly on CW and some on single sideband. I just used my little uh, miniature straight key here. I have not used it yet uh, with the keyer, uh, with the paddles. And then for single sideband, I used the supplied little uh, small handheld microphone. The audio quality reports I got on single sideband were excellent. They said the audio was extremely clear 
and uh, really sharp and punch right through. Uh, and anybody that I could hear on the radio, uh, I could work. I've talked about all the things this rig does really well, and there's really only one very minor complaint that I have, and that's in CW mode because we've got you know close to a 20 kilohertz wide receive bandwidth. If you have uh, strong CW signals outside of the frequency range that you're listening to, those very strong signals can affect the gain for the signal that you're listening to. So essentially the AGC can kind of get knocked down from strong adjacent signals. And I've only found this to be a problem when band conditions are really good and the, and the band is actually very crowded and you're trying to listen to a very weak station. But again, that's a pretty minor complaint and during my week-long uh, vacation using the radio it wasn't an issue at all. And the only place I notice it is here at home where I've got my larger antenna that picks up a lot more stations with a lot higher strength. But playing with the attenuator a little bit and moving things around, you're able to avoid the issue for the most part. But I've been emailing back and forth with the developer, and he's going to be looking into ways to improve that performance with future firmware updates. Overall, I would say this FX4C is a real winner. I would probably give it a, a 8.5 or 9.0, and with just that fixing that AGC issue, this rig would be a 10. Thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And I'd love to hear your comments and questions down below. I'll also include a link uh, to the webpage for uh, the developer of the radio, a place where you can buy it. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.